Good afternoon. My name is Christine Soler and I am David's wife. I wanted to talk a little bit about what it's like from the caretaker perspective because today is the anniversary of David's stroke. Five years ago on March 23rd, 2017, we got unexpected news that changed our lives forever. However, we chose how it changed our lives. So I wanted to go into a little bit about what it's like hearing that news, um, what your brain does in the beginning and what you need to do to be the caretaker to either your spouse or a parent or a child. So I remember the day very well. It was March 23rd, 2017. I was at work ready to go on a trade show and David and his mother-in-law were actually in Puerto Rico while we live in Georgia. They were celebrating their, um, it was my mother-in-law's brother and my husband's godfather's 80th birthday. So it was a grand celebration for them. They were enjoying themselves. And then the day after the celebration, all of a sudden David felt a little bit different. His aunt watched him walk into the house and was concerned with uh, the way that he was talking with her, looking at her. She called in some additional reinforcements and they noticed that something wasn't quite right. His uncle then notified them that he was definitely having a stroke. And so they called the ambulance from there. So let's fast forward to where I found out. I got a call from my aunt, which is David's aunt, my aunt-in-law. And I was excited, asked her, oh, you guys having a great time? And she said, Christine, I've got something to tell you. David had a stroke, we're on the way to the hospital now. And I remember hearing that for the first time and I was trying to process it. Um, I, I'm kind of a take charge person. So immediately I was like, okay, where are you going? Where are you going to be? Um, what are the steps? How long has it been? Um, and she gave me all that information. I told her, let me hang up with you. I'm going to see what I can do because I knew I immediately needed to go to Puerto Rico. So I hung up with her. Uh, first thing I did was walk into my boss's office to say, hey, David's having a stroke. Um, it's very fortunate. My boss said, you know, go, go take care of him, fly to Puerto Rico. Um, we've got this covered, don't worry about anything. So I called my daughter, who is my oldest daughter, she's 25 now, and said, hey, I've got to go to Puerto Rico, David had a stroke. And so she immediately came, picked me up, took me to the house where I could pack a bag, as I was making plane reservations, she took me to the airport. She also stayed behind to take care of our younger two children who are currently 18 and 20, meaning that at the time they were 13 and 15, my oldest daughter being 20. Immediately got on a plane and started doing research at the airport as much as I could find out, finding out that there's two different types of strokes, not knowing which type he had, knowing that one would typically be a high blood pressure marker while the other one would be a high cholesterol. Knowing that my husband didn't have either kind of put me in a tailspin. I I know that he didn't have high cholesterol. We have physicals every year. I know he didn't have high blood pressure. Again, we have physicals every year. So getting on the plane to Puerto Rico is a three hour flight. And in that time, I started thinking through all the things that I needed to do. Um, do I, how long am I going to stay? Well, it's probably going to be some time. Um, what am I going to do when I get there? I guess I'll need to get a hotel to be near him. Um, just all of those different things running through my head. I'm a list maker. So immediately I'm just taking down lists of all the things that I need to do while I'm doing research. I get into Puerto Rico by that time. It's late at night. Uh, one of David's cousins picks me up from San Juan and drives me to the hospital that he is at, which is about an hour away. They actually did let me go into the ICU. Uh, they let me go against the ICU hours, asked me a couple of questions. Being that they spoke Spanish and I didn't, uh, I was lucky to have my cousin there, David's cousin there, who could translate for me. Um, finding out that the doctor would be in tomorrow. I could ask the doctor questions. I found out that they did some CT scans. I did find out that it was a hemorrhagic stroke, which is a bleed. In that time, our whole world was changing very quickly. I started to think about, okay, my kids are in school. What are they going to do while I'm gone? Yes, my older daughter is there to be with them, but she also has to go to school. 
So how is she going to take care of them and also go to school? So there's a lot of things going through the mind of a caretaker who you wanna be there for your spouse, but you also have other priorities and other responsibilities that you need to take care of. Um, I tried to get as much sleep as I could in the hotel. And then I spoke with my mother-in-law who was of course, obviously um, a little stressed from the situation because she did see everything happen. And she did go through the understanding of what needed to be done and getting him from hospital to hospital in Puerto Rico. Uh, she did an amazing job, but I can imagine that the stress on her was incredible. So at that time, we went to the hotel, stayed overnight, and went in on visiting hours the next day, trying to talk to a doctor, any doctor that uh, we could. And the scary thing about uh, a stroke is that you don't know what's happening next. You don't know what the outcomes are going to be. You don't know if it's going to be um, simple changes that need to be made or it's major changes. So there's a lot of uncertainties in that first week that you're going through. So what we found is that uh, God was all important in our lives and we just need to really focus on keeping our eyes on God and that God would take care of us. And that's what we did, uh, leaned heavily on God and his ability to carry us through, um, emotionally especially. And luckily, we had some very good family support who prayed for us through this time. After we found out the diagnosis uh, of what David had, it was a hemorrhagic stroke, which is a bleed, they had asked us, uh, so he has high blood pressure, right? And we said, no. We went through all of the records of the blood pressure and his high, his blood pressure was never high and it wasn't uncontrolled. And that's where they were going with it. They assumed that that's what it was. And then we went through, well, what is the prognosis? What are we going to be looking at? How massive is the stroke? We found out that David's stroke was in the basal ganglia. It affected the right side of his body. David is right-handed. So we knew that he was going to need to now use the left side of his body and rely on the left side of his body. Uh, we found out that it was in the basal ganglia and weren't sure of how much it would affect speech, uh, thought, emotions, or just physicality. So that was a lot to be learned. I remember the second day that we went to visit during visiting hours, uh, the first thing he told me was, don't forget we need to pay the American Express. and just that one statement that he made um, in his way of stating it, because at that time he wasn't speaking or wasn't speaking completely clearly. I think that I really understood that everything is going to be okay. If he is thinking about our family and thinking about what needed to be done, what day is it? Oh, don't forget you need to do this. I knew that um, God had it all under control and we were going to be okay. So David spent seven days in the ICU in Puerto Rico. During that time, we were fortunate that the next week was spring break. So we brought our kids over to Puerto Rico so that they could see their father and they could have that time with him. Also, uh, they were able to enjoy Puerto Rico a little bit, um, not necessarily on the best terms, but at least they were able to enjoy it. Uh, we ended up getting an Airbnb for an extended period of time. It was less money than a hotel. And when you're traveling and have a stroke, it's a lot different than when you have a stroke and you're in a location where you live and you can just go home. So we had to figure out that uh, renting a car is something that we had to do. And we had to understand that um, transporting someone after they had a stroke is not as uh, easy as you might think. So we had to do therapy in the location. So you, if you have a stroke in a location where you're not living, you're also going to be doing therapy so that you can get to a place where you can travel and you can get back home. For us, it happened to be in a place that was um, accessible by plane and not, uh, you couldn't just drive that was a new reality for us. So after David went through his therapy, which was a uh, four week process, he was a week in the hospital, total of five weeks. Uh, we couldn't yet go home. The neurologist wouldn't sign off on uh, flying home yet until she went and visited with David to make sure that he was okay. 
in that consultation, uh, we understood that yes, David could fly home uh, where he might have some challenges. He might have a midair seizure. For us, we decided not to take that risk. Uh, we looked at different things like, could we get on a, a boat? Could we get on a cruise ship? Well, to find out, you can only do cruise ships round trip. You can't get on a cruise ship in one location and then get to another location. So that was a new experience for us as well. We had to find a plane. I was very fortunate again that uh, I had a family member, my father, was able to pull some strings and make some things happen and flew us home on medical transport, which means that you have a, a plane with two, uh, two nurses or EMTs that will watch you check your vital signs the entire time. Uh, very fortunate for us because if not, we would be risking flying a commercial plane, um, sitting in a small seat, uh, with someone who was finding it difficult to sit for long periods of time and then risking a seizure in midair, which is completely scary after what you've just been through. So we did learn a lot from this experience, um, trying to keep things together, trying to work from different locations wherever you could find Wi-Fi on the island was um, quite interesting. Uh, worrying about my kids and making sure that they were covered. Thank goodness my mother-in-law stayed with them. Um, praise to God that she was able to do that. It, it just, it did create a lot of challenges that we had to figure out one at a time. And I thank God that I had a very supportive family, uh, that I was really able to, uh, just pray my way through it and then understand that, um, I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was. And I think that just knowing that David was still with us, uh, was so important. The scariest thing was not knowing what was going to happen. Is he going to be with us? Is he going to be able to see his daughters walk down the aisle? Will he be able to be there for them when they get older? And we would have never thought about taking this trip before. In fact, uh, we'd probably still be working our jobs day to day and not getting this time together. So I know that God put a lot of things in place and we've been through some hardships in the past five years, but the doors have been opened for us. And um, even though this has happened to David, he's a survivor, he's worked really hard to get through it. And so our lives have been blessed through the stroke. So on the five year anniversary of his stroke, um, I just want him to know that I love him and that I'm proud of him and I'm excited to take this journey with him.